This video goes over some of the mods you see at the very end of Pokemon Scarlet. So let this be a spoiler warning. I know it's been about a week since the games came out. If you don't want to get spoiled by the end game designs, then come back after you experience them. Otherwise, you've seen the title, you know what we're going to be talking about. I'll be going back and forth between the Paradox Mons found in Pokemon Scarlet, so the Paradox Mons of the past, and some of my own designs, making past variations of some canon mons that I chose. So, without further ado, let's go back to the past. Generation 9 has introduced a new category of mons called Paradox Mons, where the Scarlet version of the game features 8 new designs based off of the prehistoric past, one of which you meet pretty early on. Coridon, the funny bike lizard you see on the box. Personally, I do find this to be a pretty clever way to reference previous mods. I mean, we've had new evolutions, or new branching evolutions, or even regional variants of previous mods. But this time, this is kind of like a temporal variant. Or at least that's what we're led to believe. But this concept of having mods from a prehistoric age has been explored by some fans. I remember fake mod artists on Instagram who based our whole region off of the prehistoric past. Namely, the Arcana region. Links are in the description. They once held a challenge back in 2021 to make our own prehistoric designs. So I made a design based off of Toxpex. This design references the Solacena Cthulhu, which was a species that looked so weird that it was named after the Lovecraftian horror icon. Now I failed to mention this before, but all these Paradox Mons except for Coridon have this weird naming convention where it's just two words. Like Great Tusk or like Scream Tail. Ooh. So with that in mind, I'll probably call this Elder Bunker. Plus, I should probably call this design Water and Dark type, but Poison and Dark sounded more fun. So looking back at Scarlet's Paradox Mons, frankly, I've kind of had a hard time deciphering this set. Now all these Paradox Mons are known for being pretty powerful because they all have pretty high base stats, but some of them are based off of not fully evolved Mons? Are these guys even referencing specific species? You see, I think I've been looking at this the wrong way. Now there's some theories on the lore whether these guys are actually from the past or not, but what's important here is that these guys are prehistoric flavor, instead of biologically trying to deduce what these guys could have been. For example, look at Sandy Shocks. It's a clear reference to Magneton, which in our world doesn't really have a biological parallel. But this object mon isn't just a rougher version of its current self, but it's kind of dressed up like a caveman. Honestly, this is my favorite of the past Paradox Mons. I found it very clever how they had iron filings stuck to a magnet and made it look like messy hair on a caveman. So with all this in mind, I made my own past Paradox Mon based off of Aegislash. Here's Piercing Cut. It's not exactly a sword anymore, but it is based off of arrowheads, which are artificially cut stones that we could find that show proof of a prehistoric society building their own tools and weapons that they probably used to hunt. Thus, imbued with a fighting spirit, this mon was dubbed a fighting ghost type. I tried to use more of the yellow and orange color schemes like the other past paradox mons, kind of like Fred Flintstone. Looking at the rosters of these Paradox Mons from both games, I noticed how Violet references two pseudo-legendaries while Scarlet only references Salamence. By the way, pseudo-legendary just refers to a specific trope where there's this one super strong line that has a total base stat of 600 which is supposed to be super high. Yeah, you only see one line of those per region. I mean, there was one with two, but point still stands. It just turns out that Paradox Mons chose some of these super strong Mons to make variations of them. And it turns out, 
Salamence alone is exclusive to Violet, while the pseudos referenced in Violet's Paradox mods are exclusive to Scarlet. But these exclusive mods are supposed to be side grades of each other, right? Because there's two versions, and if they're both compelling, then more people will want to buy both of them. That means there's one more exclusive pseudo that we're not talking about here. Yes, that's Dracopult from Generation 8. I don't exactly know why we don't have a prehistoric Dracopult this time around. I mean, while trying to make it, it was a bit difficult to make it unique from all the other fan interpretations. Because here's the thing, Dracopult is Dragon Ghost type. It's supposed to be a ghost, a spirit, of this past prehistoric mod. It's already in its lore that there was a prehistoric version of Dragapult. So it was almost a perfect opportunity for them to show that in these past paradox forms. But we got what we got. And this is my interpretation. If you didn't know, Dragapult is originally based off of the Diplocolis, which was a prehistoric amphibian known for its boomerang-shaped head. That's why this design is flat on the ground, being dragon and ground type. Maybe that's why it became extinct, because it's quad weak to ice types. I'd imagine Dreepy sunbathing on the Dracopult's back, but I didn't want to force them into the design, especially because these Paradox mods don't really show any of the other stages. So yeah, I call this Marsh Jet. You know, looking back at these past Paradox mods, I think they share more similarities than I initially thought. I mean, they all got jaundice, that's for sure. But a part of their body seems to be overgrown in some way. Whether that be their tail, or their tusks, or their tails. You know, it took me way too long to realize that all of these have tails. So, I got one more design for you, which I named Crash Giant. I'm trying my best to make these sound cool. It's a plesiosaur lapras. The plesiosaur is an order of marine reptiles from the Mesozoic era, which were known for their long necks. And the Loch Ness Monster, which Lapras is originally kinda based off of, matches the description of a plesiosaur, with its super long neck and generally large body. I thought it would be more interesting to call this a water dragon type, mainly due to it being so big. So, those were some past Paradox fake mods, going over real prehistoric references, to caveman aesthetics, to designs with overgrown features. I'll have a video on the future Paradox mods in... well, the future. Hopefully by then I'll have a better mic. Gen 9 recently came out, so I'll be doing some videos on it, but I also have a current series going over my own designs, my STEM-based region. So if any of that interests you, follow along and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the future.